Fighting out of the red corner on my left, the challenger. He weighed in at 75.7 kilograms. He's fighting in the red, black, and white trunks. His fight record, 39 wins, seven losses, and two draws. 25 wins by way of knockout. He is the current South African super middleweight champion, and he's also a former two-time world lightweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the challenger from Soweto, South Africa. Please welcome Bingo, the Rose of Soweto, Tobela. Ladies and gentlemen, out of the blue corner on my right, weighed in at 75.85 kilograms. He's fighting in the purple trunks. His fight record, 26 wins, three losses, and one draw. 20 of those 26 wins within the distance. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the current British middleweight champion, and tonight he defends for the first time a title he won from German Marcus Bayer. Ladies and gentlemen, the current WBC super middleweight champion of the world from Bristol, England, please welcome Glenn Catley. All right, boxers, you both received your instructions. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Let's touch gloves. Good, clean fight. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Well, this is the one we've been waiting for, Nick. There's the stats. Uh, Ding on the bell at 67, 74. Quite a difference there in the uh, reach. Height 170, 177. I think they got the age wrong there because Ding on the bell is a little bit older than that, Nick. He uh, is 34 years old. The 24th of September will be his birthday, he'll be 34. But you're here in the first round of this WBC middle, the super middleweight uh, championship fight, scheduled for 12 rounds. I think Ding on Tabella would like to be 29 again for this fight, that's for sure, against uh, Glenn Catley, because uh, he's going to have his work cut out. Catley, good, compact, come forward fighter, strong fighter. Tabella, though, a rare talent, certainly in uh, South African boxing. And that's Glenn Catley in the mouth trunks and. Ding on to Bella, the challenger in the multicolored trunks, the red, the green, the yellow, and the blue. Well, as we expected, the champion has planted himself solidly in front of Tabella in the center of the ring. It's not going to be the type of fight where either fighter has to go looking for the other opponent. Tabella in those uh, South African colors, Catley in the purple. Ben Catley has been fighting most of his uh, fighting life as a middleweight. It's only recently he's uh, gone up to the uh, uh, super middleweight. Well, still the British champion. Uh, yeah, the but he, yeah, but he gave the, gave the title up when he won that WBC title. The WBC super middleweight title. But he's coming in now as a fully-fledged uh, super middle. He says he feels comfortable as a super yeah, middleweight. Yeah, both fighters obviously looking very much super middleweight. Comfortable at the weight, certainly to Valerie's. Glenn Catley uh, he wanted to give up boxing a little while ago. You know, he was, a, he was a security guard. That was his job. He wasn't getting fights. Uh, and then he got the crack at Richie Woodall. All the dispute about that. And then he got the big one, Marcus Bayer. Of course, we all know how winning a title two can really elevate your performance in the ring. And uh, Glenn Catley may well fall into that category. And we got our uh, referee here tonight, Eddie Cotton from the United States. A very, very accomplished referee, Nick. Not to be confused with Eddie Cotton, the fighter, a great light heavyweight in the early years. Uh, Eddie Cotton has just been rated one of the top ten referees by Ring Magazine. So a very confident official, Eddie Cotton. Well, Catley landing a light right hand. No fighter has done any sort of damage thus far at all. It's really a reconnaissance round, this opening round. Catley with a stiff left jab. Just feeling each other out there, you know, just seeing what it's all about. Evenly matched, uh, both fighters possibly the same height. Uh, same sort of builds too. Very much so, you know, you call them uh, chunky or chunky. Chunky, chunky would be chunky a polite, would, uh, polite way of describing it. Yes. <laughs> About the last 10 seconds out of round one, a very quiet opening round, but understandable. Both fighters just feeling each other out. Nothing really to separate the two fighters in this opening round. Good left hands coming down. Oh, Tabella, a little bit right hand there from uh, Dingo Tabella. Plus, is it enough to shade the round? Well, I would say definitely yes. It was the only telling uh, punch of the round. A 
some action yeah and of course you'll see that uh, right hand coming in at a jazz and oh, that is it right at the end of the bell you see it's the better just jabbing scoring with the jab and then cutting a good right hand there from the bella the best uh, shot of the whole round just settle down okay just settle down don't walk under his right hand think about it all right think about what you're doing all the time okay good all right Chris Senegal, who does so uh, uh, much good work with his uh, British fighters and UK-based fighters. And look, uh, Ben Catley from Bristol, he's the first Bristolian to win a world title. Uh, a lot of good Ben Knuckle fighters from the Ben Knuckle days came out. And two champions, three British champions from the 1700s, 1800s came from Bristol. Uh, but since those days, he's the first real recognized world champion from Bristol. Then going to Bella will be looking to capitalize on that right hand he landed at the bell. Set up behind the jab, it must be emphasized too. And a, a jab is a key punch, obviously, for both fighters in this fight. But to Bella especially, as he, he regards that right hand now as his key punch, he's got to set it up behind the jab. Well, you know, just reading about Catley, they say he's got a leaky defense, and uh, you have to watch out. If it's true, he'll have problems with to Bella with those sneak right hands. Good defensive work there by uh, Tabella. And that's Glenn Catley, the WBC super middleweight champion in the mild trunks. And Ding on Tabella, the challenger from South Africa in the multicolored trunks. Good technical boxing there, Nick. Uh, you know, both fighters working for the openings. A bit of pushing there with the shoulder. The referee didn't pick it up, and I've just been praising him in the first round. He should have picked that up. Pushing with the uh, elbow of Catley, that's a foul. I see Catley changing the angles too, uh, determined not to stay in one spot. Uh, he, he's felt the power of that right hand from Tabella, and I think that's why he's doing that. Well, Tabella fighting his normal slow pace here, uh, just working slowly, working for the openings. Well, for Dingo and Tabella, pace is everything in a fight. You know, at 34, and uh, at times in the past, having struggled with weight and conditioning, he, he knows he has to pace himself correctly. Yeah. He can't rely on speed. He can only rely on speed to punch. That's all he can do. Catley gets home with a, a light right hand. Not really landing. Good defense here by Tabella. Got to watch out for that left hook, Catley. Known for the big left hook. You've got to get inside to dig in underneath uh, with that left hook. That's his dangerous punch. We're going to last 30 seconds out of round two. A very uneventful uh, round two. Very little action done in both fighters. Now Tabella picking it up again here in the last few seconds. Very little in this round. I'd hate to call it. Uh, have to go for the even round. Got a good job, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right. Nice deep breath. Little drink. Little drink. Open your mouth wide. Okay. He's watch his head. He's using his head. He's using his head. Round three of this uh, 12 round WBC Super Middleweight Championship fight, Garrett Carnival City. Uh, very little action from uh, either fighter in the first two rounds, but it's been the cat and mouse. Yeah. Tabella yeah. landing a clean right hand to end the first round, but that uh, is it, I think, for really clean punches between the two of them thus far. But, uh, but, uh, 
looking at Catley, you know, he's a bit of a negative fighter at times, and he's known for this negativity. But he can come on strong at the end, and that's been his secret, coming on strong at the end. Yeah, there is a school of thought that says if uh, Dingo Antibella cannot win this inside the opening six rounds, he really is going to struggle in the uh, last six. Because you as you that, point out, the, can't he get stronger as the fight right. goes on? But you see the elbow going again, the referee hasn't picked it up. No, that's bad. That's the second time he's gone in with the elbow. See, yeah. elbow going, another elbow going down. The referee not picking up on the wrong side. Slick defensive work yeah, from yeah, Dengar Antibelli. He has a habit of crossing those arms, and uh, a lot of those punches not missing, uh, not hitting the target. That right well, that, hand, that was a right hand. That, that caught the through. target. That's a good shot there from the champion. And Catley's first really clean right hand. Well, Catley picking up the pace here in round two. A little bit more uh, urgency in his work. The head going in there. You've got to watch out for that head. And the right hand coming in there again for Catley. Now he's warming to his task. A better round for the champion. The belly is cagey though. He's picking up a lot of those shots, as I say, on the elbows and on the gloves. All the while, just looking for a, a clean shot at Catley's jaw with that right hand of his. It's a better fight than the right fight. They're just pacing himself. Let uh, Catley do all the work. I think Dingyuan needs to work for his openings a little more. Dingyuan de Bella does. Okay. He's allowing Catley to take the fight to him. Go and give him a two minute, ten minute rounds away. Now, a good sharp little one coming in there, left in from the, the champion. WBC super middleweight title at stake. Champion Glenn Catley, challenger Dingo de Bella. A good combination coming in there for the champion. The champion's winning this round. The 40 seconds you have to go in round three. Waiting for the explosion yet, the develop explode, but uh, pretty little happening. Uh, and there's another right hand coming in the chat. The developer's got to watch out for those right hands. The busy round here for the champion, Glenn Catley, and he must take that round. Well, you feel Dingo Antibella has to work a little harder for those openings. He looks good when he uh, starts using the jab, boxing from behind the jab. But the champion's been busy in this round, Nick. He's throwing more combinations. Uh, Dingo yeah, let him come to him. Right, when you get through, to move to the side, you All right? We're into round four, the scheduled 12 round here for the WBC Super Middleweight title. And a good third round for uh, Glenn Catley. Busy in the round. <laughs> Glenn Catley fighting a clever fight, Joe. Just picking his punches. Slightly different fight to the one I anticipated. I thought Catley would come forward a little more. Uh, he, Cabela would be more on the back foot and uh, counter-punching. Uh, now, this is his style, Nick. You know, he, he likes to fight off the back foot. He likes to be a bit negative, and then he fights in bursts. You can see when he throws those combinations. Nice uh, right hand from Dingo and Cabela. <laughs> Dingo and Cabela con take too many of those body shots. I think Gindong Tabella would be quite happy actually coming forward because it's allowing him to control the pace of the fight. He doesn't want to get drawn into a fight where he's forced to fight too much. In the sense that uh, he needs to pace himself over the 12 rounds. Well, I think these are the tactics. You can see where the tactics he's using. Didn't uh, Catley do all the work? But uh, tight defense. Picking up most of the punches on, on the gloves, on the arms. Again, that uh, familiar cross-arm defense from Dingo Antibella. 
giving the champion a bit of trouble there because he's battling to pierce that defense, you know. But the champion is doing all the work. He must win the round. And uh, Pabella can't give these rounds away. The early rounds are important if they go to 12 rounds. Timing a bit off there, timing off there by Tabella. Gatley moving out of range very cleverly. Right hand landing from, uh, from, uh, from Tabella, but you see Catley uh, with the elbow again, yeah, and then got Tabella picking it up. Well, the referee not picking it up, and I, I think that's wrong. But all the work coming from Catley, and he's got to win the round just on sheer aggression. Guys, the last 10 seconds of this uh, final round, uh, the, the final seconds of this uh, third round, yeah. Oh, a good few shots coming there from Tabella. Closing seconds of the fourth round. Round five, champion Glenn Kathley is probably winning these rounds. They look close, but uh, on our card, Kathley with the higher work rate. Got a, got a problem here. Yeah? Water in the corner. Oh. Oh. Referee Eddie Cotting just making them clean up the water and ice in the corner. Come back over here. Come back over here. Uh, well, they've cleaned it all out now. It looks like they've taken all the ice out. So here we go. Round five of this uh, WBC super middleweight title fight. Champion Glenn Catley. And the last two rounds, good rounds for the champion. He won both these rounds on my card. The busier fighter, more aggression. Nothing spectacular, but uh, winning rounds for the champion. Well, a little bit of history here in the ring tonight. Uh, first WBC title fight ever in South Africa. Tabella looking to load up on that right hand. What he needs is he's got to pick it up. You know, he's giving rounds away. He can't afford to give too many away. Oh, solid jab from Tabella. Catley blinked as he took that punch. But Tabella's got to throw more punches. But watch that head uh, of, Ka of Catley too. Coming in rather dangerous at the head of times. Well, Tabella trying to measure him, but Catley just ducking underneath those punches. Clever boxing is Catley. Catley's doing all the work. Tabella can't win the rounds like this. Good job, good job. She's relying on one punch, she's going to go Oh, left hook landing from Tabella. Catley took it well, though. Crowd got excited, but uh, Catley took it well. He's not throwing enough punches, is Tabella. Catley doing all the work. And this must impress the judges. Good little right hand coming there from a champion. Those right hands to the midriff of Dingon Tabella will take their toll as this fight progresses. Well, Tabella, 34 years old, slow down, uh, fighting at his pace, but uh, Catley, the younger man, 28 years old. Well, Dingon's fight strategy is all around fighting in spurts these days. He's looking for some solid shots. He's battling against the champion, he's ducking in and out. Good defensive work there, a uh, movement by Catley. Crowd getting excited, but really nothing special coming in from Tabella. Catley with the right hand may have snuck between the gloves. The only scoring punch is coming from Catley, and another round in the back for the champion.
Round six, yeah. And, uh, you know, this is what's happening. Ding on to is not doing enough work. He's letting Catley do all the work, and Catley's sneaking in the rounds. You can't give the rounds away. In a 12-round fight, these are the rounds that count. Yeah, Tabella relying perhaps too much on one punch at a time. Uh, Needs to get the combinations going a bit. Catley can be knocked out. He's been stopped twice in his career. But uh, really, Ding is going to have to catch him because he's uh, shifty, he moves well. Some good little shots coming in there from Tabella, but uh, really didn't uh, play the champion at all. That was a good right hand there by the... Catley felt that one. Quite surprised the referee isn't picking up those elbows. He pushes with the elbow all the time. The referee hasn't picked it up once. Good right hand there from Tabella. Again, Catley's got a, a good chin. We've seen that already. He's taken uh, a couple of those right hands flush. He's been tested here in this round. Bouncing off the top of uh, Glenn Catley's head now. Punches from Tabella. Better round for Tabella, though. He's picked up the action a bit here. Well, the scoring shots have come from the challenger. And that's thing on Tabella in the multicolored shorts and Glenn Catley in the mouth trunks. Get up, get up, good job. Catley scoring with the right hand. Bella just waiting for that opening, conserving his energy, but letting the champion come at him. And a surprise, the world class referee like Eddie Cotton not picking up those elbows. Rather surprised. Bella really short with all those punches. Timing not too good. Just warning for the head and quite correctly so referee Eddie Cotton. A good little jab coming there from Bella. Possibly his best round since the, the second round. Still fighting his first, but he's done more in this round than in previous rounds. And more effective punches are coming from Bella. Catley though with a late rally. Good, oh, good right hand there from Tabella. Good shots coming in from at the end of the round now. He's shaking the champion. A good finish there for Tabella. He must take that round. Action, yeah, possibly some of those good shots coming in from Tabella. He handed the better punches in that round, sharp uh, punches coming in from the challenger. Uh, uh, a lot of those punches are missing, they weren't landing. It was only at the end of the round that Tabella caught him, and that is the one. There it is, to the head, and Catley felt those shots. They were stinging punches. With a little right hand, and then uh, doubling up really with the right hand that started that uh, series of combinations from Tabella. So Dingo and Tabella, perhaps marginally behind on points, it's a close fight. We move into the second half of this uh, super middleweight title fight. Dingo and Tabella, Glenn Catley. Now, has Tabella got enough in the tank to take it through? If it needs to go to points, can he pick up the work rate? If he can't. Uh, Ron, I would suggest he's going to lose this one on points. Oh, yes. No, you know, the busier fight he is, the champion, Ken Catley. Uh, sneaking rounds. Uh, Tavella complaining about the head, but the referee says no. That baby stings the Tavella into action. Lands a right hand, and it causes Catley to back up. Clean right hand. 
Uh, Japan has got a cut there on the edge. You can see that right between the eyes. There's a cut between the eyes. The blood just pouring out, and it's a bad position for Tabella. And that obviously was caused by the bash of heads. I'm surprised the referee well, didn't, didn't pick, pick that up. up either. Well, a little bit disappointed in the refereeing here tonight. I think I, he came out with uh, good credentials. Uh, not a top class referee, but he really hasn't handled the fight all that well. Because it was obvious to everybody ringside that that's what happened. As you can see, Catley's, Catley's coming with the head all the time. And it's dangerous with the head. Working the body still is Glenn Catley. Oh, that was on the low side. Well, the referee was quite right there. He picked that up. I think it was accidental. Get up, get up, get up. The bell has got to pick up the pace. Just giving away rounds right now. See the head going in there again. And a good combination from the champion. Well, the cut's in a bad place. The blood will run into his eyes. He's going to have problems. But he's got a good cut, cut man in the corner there in Harold Fulbright. They've got to stop that blood quickly. Elbow going in again there. Elbow going in again. If he doesn't pick it up, I'm quite surprised. Well, very poor referee in Yuck. Well, punching rather accurately in this round. Another good right hand coming there, but, but Catley giving him another little left hand there, returning. And another one coming in, Catley. Catley's a busier fighter, throwing more punches. Catley's known for the uppercut. He's got a good left hook. And a good finish here by the champion. A good round for the champion. Well, you can see that. A lot of pushing there. A lot of heads going in. I don't think the referee's handled the fight all that well. I'm rather disappointed if he caught me. Well, he certainly picked up the low blow that Dingon Dibella threw unintentionally earlier in the round. There's the elbow again going in. Now, look at that. That's quite clear. Well, he's not, he's, he never picked that elbow once. He hasn't walked the elbow once. Oh. So, round eight of this uh, WBC Super Middleweight title fight. Glenn Catley probably ahead on points, but Dingon Dibella is still dangerous but needs to pick it up, needs to dig deep, find the resources somehow in this uh, aging veteran's body stop, 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 if he wants to win this one. Thank you, the referee's picked it up eventually. The first warning is that for the uh, elbow. That's about time. Got the bird from the crowd as well. well they've been watching the big screen, Nick. They've seen it all along. Watch your head, watch your head. Watch your head. Well, it's been an intriguing fight. I wouldn't say it's been a great fight, but what a close-up, what a technique. Both fighters cagey. Catley coming in low with the head there, Catley. Very dangerous. And you can see that blood has been well controlled by the corner. That's the work of Harold Forbert in the corner of Ding on Tabella. Tabella only fighting his first. That's his only hope. He can't win this fight on points. Carrying on like he does now. Well, it's part of the part of the armory of Catley. He just can't help it. He fights you that arm and the elbow coming in. Tabella, good right hand. A stinging right hand. That rocked Catley. And now the Rose looking for his opportunity, Ron. That rocked Catley. Well, that's the best shot of the fight. And Catley knew he was hurt there. Tight defense coming in. Another good right hand there from the challenger. Stinging blows from Dinga and Tabella. And another good left hand. A nose bleed there. The nose is bloody. Pouring blood from Catley. So the elbow, the elbow. elbow going in again from Catley. Another elbow going in. Lovely uppercut inside for Tabella. He's focused now. He's picking up. Big right hand there for Tabella. 
And the crowd here behind the South African. He's really got the champion hurt there. But if he's only up, he'll never win this fight on points at this rate. He's got to knock the champion out. Well, not going wild is Dingo de Bella looking for another clear shot. He realized Catley was hurt, but Catley was still in control of himself. Catley's a tough customer. Oh, he takes a good shot. No he's question. been there. He knows it. I think lesser super middles would have gone down. As it is, Catley bleeding from that nose. Backed into the corner now. Catley Look. coming back at him. This is what he shows. The, well, the two colors of a champion coming right back at de Bella. An elbow going in again from Catley. Champion's fighting hard, I think. We saw Kelly Oliver digging deep earlier this evening. Now getting Catley, his turn to dig deep. Oh, stop him, stop him, stop him, stop him, stop him. Stop him, stop him, stop him. Certainly didn't go on to Bella's most impressive round of the fight. Oh, he oh. must take this round. Where's the flannel? Dingon Tabella may not be physically what he was, but the talent is still there. Look at the precision punching as well. Such an accurate puncher when he gets it together. Well, that was a tremendous shot against the jaw there. That really caught the champion's attention. But all uh, credit to the champion. He came back well at the end of the round. He weathered the storm very well. That's the right hand that did the damage. Look at Catley's legs go momentarily. Now Tabella looking for the follow-up punch. And the Dingon Tabella fan club in full voice here inside the Big Top Arena Carnival City. Round nine. Can Tabella pull off uh, what uh, would be regarded as a bit of an upset, really? Kathy came in with all the aces, the younger man, the champion. point Ron this is only thing on Tabella's what second fight as a super middle? middle that's right yes he fought in England he uh, fought as a middleweight there but uh, only his second fight as a super middleweight mind you we could say the same for Glenn Catley most of his career has been fought at middle well he fought uh, Reggie Woodall as a super middleweight so he's had about four or five fights as a super middle so Tabella again looking to set up those uh, damaging right hands but you can see the champion showing a lot of respect in this round he's felt the uh, well, he's it's actually backpedaling a lot more than he has at any stage of the fight, he's been tackling. The first time he's really backpedaled in the fight. Quite noticeable. He's that nose bleeding again. He took a big shot on the nose there from Tabella. So for the first time in the fight now, Tabella has to go looking for Catley. For the first time he's really been in charge, I would say. That nose has opened up again, Catley bleeding from the nose. Flicking right hand from Tabella to remind Catley and a good stiff jab. Catley starting to uh, take a bit of punishment now. Well, Tabella just working for the openings here now. Catley just backing off. Wants to regain his sense of taking that big right hand in in the previous round. Well, the crowd all behind you. They're all singing for Ding on Tabella. The Rose Soweto. Noticeable too how the punch rate of Glenn Catley has dropped. And there that comes at elbow. Really, this referee is not doing himself justice tonight. The elbow's been in the game all the night, all night. He's getting away with it, so he just carries on, this Catley. Well, Catley slowed down considerably here in round nine. But Tabella's got to throw more punches. He's got the power. And possibly that's his only hope to win this fight. I think he felt all along that he could possibly stop Glenn Catley. If he caught him clean enough, that he could stop Glenn Catley. And I think Catley's key to winning this fight was to sustain a high work rate, which for large parts of this fight he's, he's done. I don't underestimate Glenn Catley. He's always come back strongly. He came back against Lucas. He came and he, and he, and he came, came back against uh, Bayer, Marcus Bayer. So uh, don't underestimate him. Hey! 
uneventful round, really. Uh, very little in that round. Somewhere. Well, Tabella, yes, starting late in the fight. And as I sneak a look at your card, Ron, you've got uh, Kathleen, what, a point clear at this stage. So Tabella has narrowed the range in these uh, last couple of rounds. Championship round, though, now. Round 10. Well, these are the rounds that uh, Kathleen's known to come in strong in those last rounds. But we've got to watch out for that. And now I think it really does depend, uh, as far as Dingo and Tabella is concerned, on just how much uh, road work conditioning he did coming into this fight. How hard did he work? Good there, the referee's warning Kathleen there now. And it's about time. Well, that's Kathleen's second warning for the use of the elbows. But he should have done it a long ago. He's still using the elbow. Well, I think it's just part of his fighting style. I can't help himself, Nick. It's just automatic. And that head goes in very low, oh. too. Dingo should use his uppercut. He's got a very good uppercut. And let him come in low, the head uppercut him. But a bit of more urgency in the champion's work uh, at this round. Uh, possibly got a bit of talking to him in the corner. He said, pick it up a bit. Keep it in, son. Now, here in the tent. A very little action now, very sloppy now here in the tent. A lot of pushing. I have to say now, the cleanest shot coming in from Dingyan Tabella. A very little work coming from the champion at the moment. Doing very little. Pushing well. Get a point well, taken. Taking a point away, yeah. The referee's going to deduct a point. Yes, the point deducted, yeah. Well, on your card, Ron, that evens the fight up. Evens the fight up, okay? You can't afford to give it away. I think this fight's pretty close. Come on, we're keeping him. Come on, Look at that head, still going in there. Both fighters known for their fighting hearts. Keep me, keep They've me. been in this situation before. Keep me, keep me. Kathleen, of course, against uh, Marcus Bayer, soaked up uh, quite a bit of punishment in the fight, came back strongly to win it. And of course, Dingo Tabella soaked up a lot of punishment in his uh, super middleweight South African title fight with Sun Buddhas. So he looks in better condition here tonight. He does indeed. Definitely in better condition for this fight. Quite amazing, a man at 34 in his long career. But a good right hand, as I say, that come in from the champion. That was a clean right hand from Glenn Catley. It was a difficult round to score this with a point deducted. Well, Catley again now looking the busier fighter. He seems to have found a second win, Ron. Just lifted it up. He just lifted it up. This is what he's known for. The championship rounds. Those are the rounds that Glenn Catley always comes on so strongly. Watch him head! Get out! Good round here for the champion, other than losing that point. The fossil will cost him the round because uh, he's come on very well here in the last uh, last uh, half minute of this round. Don't push him back, all right? Let him come, all right? If you will. Well, they've got to be concerned there for uh, Chris Sanagar. His fight has just lost a point, and uh, really that has evened the fight up. And it's, it's rather, yeah, it's been a close fight, Nick, and uh, the referee there just deducted a point for yeah. You see that elbow going and again, the other elbow goes again. The referee hasn't picked, enough, picked up enough of those elbows. So Glenn Catley, Dingo and Tabella. Looks like it may go to the distance. Here we are, round 11. Well, close, close title fight. Catley knows that he's got to do something special here. And watch out, he's dangerous in rounds 11 and 12. He's going to do something special because uh, it's a close fight. And our cards, but you don't know the judges see it. They can never know how they read it. Kathy did a lot of work in those earlier rounds, which I could have given to him. You know, it hasn't been a super fast pace for the fight. So I think both fighters have probably got something left here. Come on, right to show them, Glenn. Tabella lands a left hook and a right. Kathy takes a good punch. He's proved that already. Keep your shoulders in. Keep them 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 in. Uh, the 
Villa's got to go for a knockout because possibly the judges are giving us earlier rounds to uh, catch me for his busy at work rate. And uh, if it comes down to the wire, the possibly the champion will retain the title. Well, I don't think either fighter can afford to leave anything behind in these closing right, two stop rounds. Him, stop him, stop him, stop him. But all credit to Dingo the Villa to do so well in a world title fight at 34. He'll be 34 this month, and nobody expected him to put up as good a show against a, a man like Catley. Catley came here with a good reputation, and Dingo the Villa, whatever happens, he'll put up a great show here tonight. Catley landing a good combination there, left and right hand. And a good round, the champion. Give him in, give him in. Well, again, he's looking the busier fighter now, it's Glenn Catley. Oh, so he, he has picked it up again. He can't afford to give away these rounds. The Bella's giving it away. Watch out, watch out, watch the Watch the last minute out of round 11. And this is when Catley's dangerous. Well, as a tough man, works on construction sites. Watch the shoulders. From time to time. Well, that's not bad training for the boxing business. Right hand again landing by Catley. Good round for Catley. Come back strongly. Savella's waiting a little bit. He needs to get his punches off first. Catley beating him to the punch now. Has his stamina caught up with him? Has he really tiring? Is Dingon Savella tiring out in round 11? It's a good round for the champion. He must take this round. Well, he's leading in this round is uh, Glenn Catley. Uh, he's, he's winning the round. Nicholas. More work coming from getting the better punches. Savella just taking the round off. Tired to belly here now. Oh, big right hand from Glenn Catley. Tabella took it well at the belt. That must be a Catley round. So, Ding on the rose of Go. Soweto, Tabella, Glenn Catley, they fought their way through to this 12th and final round. Tough, uncompromising sort of fight it's been. No major fireworks. Tabella perhaps landing the uh, stronger punches, but Catley the busier fighter. And I think that uh, Ding on Tabella will need a big round here next to influence the judges because the must score card is behind. Catley still weary of that right hand. He knows that uh, Tabella can hurt him. He's got to stay away from that right hand. Give him, give him, give him. Give him in. Well, you see Ding on Tabella yeah, now. He's looking him back to his lightweight days. Fighting in slow motion now. Quite incredible as a man at his age can still be here in round 12. Possibly he's not done enough to take the title, but uh, who knows? Well, Catley landing a good right hand there too. You've got to remember that old adage too, the champion has the title, you have to take, take it, it away from him. him. Well, Tabella may have hurt us, because he's trying to hurt oh. He off balance, no knockdown. No knockdown. Oh. Uh, looked very close to a blow for me, I don't know what happened there. Well, it was Tabella who was turning up the heat. Yes, and uh, and uh, Catley came right back at him. But Ken, Ken Catley, the heart of a champion, he'll stay there, he'll throw bombs right to the last second of the 12th round. You better can't get jealous. A good shopping oh. right hand there by Catley. Right. That one hurt to Bella, That eh? hurt him. He's really stunned there. This is all Catley now. Catley's a strong finish, known for the finish. Fifty-four seconds left, yeah. To Bella. A beautiful. What a beautiful shot for to Bella. And Catley's in a bad way. He's in a bad way. He doesn't know where he is. This is incredible tactic. Tabella can finish this one. Catley is out on his feet. 
think he has to go down. He's going to go down. Incredible stuff. He's out on his feet. What a finish to this fight. He has to go down. Out He's on his feet. He's finished. He's gone. He's going down. He's gone down. And he won't get up. He won't get up. He can't get up surely. Incredible pandemonium here. What a great shot, Nick. I can't believe it. That's incredible stuff. What he's saying. The miracle man. The miracle man. Oh, 34 God. years old. I can't believe it. This is... Oh, Dean Contabella. Never ride him off. What a brilliant finish. I was backing Catsy to do that in the 12th round. He did it. Well, well, well. <laughs> Dean Contabella is the new WBC Superman Light What a fighter, Nick. What a fighter. Against all the odds, Cassie was yeah. picking up the pace in the 12th round. This is unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable stuff. Well, it's tremendous stuff, John. Oh, Nick, oh, this is boxing. You never finish till the last round. To build a hoisted shoulder high. Stuff, I'm right? looking across the Glen Catley because he was hurt badly. Catley was coming forward at this stage. He looked in control of the fight again. He caught Tabella with a cuffing right hand. He's moving in again. With Tabella picking up those punches on the arms, picking them up on the uh, shoulders, on the gloves. And look, it's, it's all Catley here yeah. in this exchange. Waiting for that opening. And there it came, a little... Uh, Tabella, no, now he's coming now. Watch Tabella. There, there, a little, uh, little uppercut. That was the beginning. And then a sharp right hand, that sneak right hand from Tabella. There you are, the side of the head. That was the beginning of the end. And, you know, really, that was a great shot there from Tabella. Look into Catley's eyes now. Uh, Catley was gone at that stage. Uh, really, Absolutely he was in a gone. bad way. Uh, but he's a champion. The referee had to give him the benefit of the doubt. But now you can see Catley just really, he was finished. Now, Little this is the cut. second knockdown. Catley already badly hurt now. He's got nothing uh, left. There, there you are. Oh, that is incredible. That's good. Well done, uppercut the ding on Tabella. Great stuff. He just smashed him down. Picking his punches. Clean shots. Not too hurried. The crowd just loved this, Nick. Just listen to him cheering every shot from the belly on the slow motion. There he goes. Boom, the right hand. The Bella just picking the shots. Clean, clinical shots from being on the Bella. Magnificent stuff, yeah. We've got these big screens here inside uh, the big top arena, and the crowd is just uh, reliving every punch there. This is on to Bella. The world champion. Super middleweight champion of the world. Champion for the third time. And what a title to win, too, the WBC title. Well, incredible scenes here tonight. Ding on the Bella. Wow, wow, wow. What a champion. Well, those of us that said a few years ago that Ding on the Bella should get out of the game are looking pretty silly now. Well, so am I, Nick. I'm one of the ones who said that. Ladies and gentlemen, you came here to see world title boxing. We gave you two knockouts in the first two title fights. We gave you another one right at the end of the final. Ladies and gentlemen, he came here a little bit earlier on this year and took the national title from Suen Buddhas. Tonight, he took the world title from Glenn Catley. Two minutes and 53 seconds into the 12th round, the new WBC super middleweight champion by knockouts from South Africa. Dingan, the Rose of Soweto, Tabela! Another Fox Sports snapshot taken by Inside Sport. Yeah, I can change a tyre. I changed one uh, a couple of weeks ago, so uh, it uh, took me a while to, to work out how to get the nuts off, but uh, yeah, I have. Yeah, I don't like doing it, but I can, yes. Oh, yes, I can. Very ordinary, but... Yeah, just. <laughs> definitely. Very easy. Yeah, of course. Oh, definitely, yeah. I 
could get on the phone and say, can I, no, I can do that, that's fine. Yes, I can, but it's been a while. Yes, I can. I haven't changed one for a while, luckily, because I lost my licence, but um, I, I can do it. I used to be able to change.